If you or someone you know were suffering from a stroke, would you know what the signs are, what to look for? Dr. Andrew Ducre, he is a endovascular neurosurgeon from Barrow Brain and Spine, and he's here to teach us the signs of a stroke. I was alarmed, one in four people don't know the signs. Yes, it's um, <laughs> oftentimes, crazy. oftentimes a stroke can be a dramatic event, but sometimes the signs can be very subtle. Sometimes the symptoms can come on and go away. And so it's very important to recognize these signs and to um, really take action, seek medical attention. Right, and I, I think I said it wrong. Only one in four recognize the signs, I should have said. Well, they recognize the signs. So what are they? What should we be looking for? Well, so I really like the American Stroke Association's FAST campaign. It's a mnemonic to help us um, identify the signs of a stroke. So F is for face. So basically, um, a face should be symmetric if you see asymmetry on the side of a face or if you're when you smile there's some abnormality on one mm -hmm. side of the face that may be a sign of a stroke okay um, a a is for arm arm so okay. you ask ask the patients or ask the family member or your friend to raise their arms up and if one arm isn't uh, doesn't uh, hold up as well as the other arm. Mm -hmm. That could be a sign of a stroke. Okay, and, C is and, speech? Well, S is for speech. S, okay. And so if you, if you encounter someone who's having trouble um, coming up with words or garbling their speech or they're not understanding you, mm -hmm. then that may also be a sign of a stroke. And, okay. and mm -hmm. T is for time. So if any one of those um, F, A, or S uh, um, basically are abnormal, then it's time to seek medical attention. All right, so fast. I like that. Face, arm, speech, time. So we got to look for all of those signs. So when patients come into uh, Barrel with stroke symptoms, what techniques are you all using there? So there's a number of things we can offer for stroke patients. The, the traditional technique, if you get to the hospital fast enough, is um, for us to administer a medication in the vein. It's called tissue plasminogen activator, TPA. Mm -hmm. It's a clot busting agent. So basically, um, if you can get there fast enough, we can administer TPA, it can dissolve the blood clot, it can open up the blood vessel to the brain and improve the symptoms. Um, but this doesn't always work for some uh, blockages that are too large or if the patient gets there too late. So the other technique that's uh, really becoming more uh, important, especially after a number of positive trials that we had in uh, 2015, is endovascular treatment. So I actually brought a, a couple of little um, examples of some of, the tech, uh, some of the devices we use. So this, mm -hmm. this is a small catheter. We call it a microcatheter. And through a catheter that we place in the patient's uh, artery in their leg, we're able to track this microcatheter over a wire. And this microcatheter we take actually up into the blood clot and across the blood clot. Mm -hmm. And once we do that, this is what's known as a stent retriever or stent retriever. Mm -hmm. It's a very fine on this the is, end. The it is very there. small, very fine, and specifically designed that we deploy this across the blood clot in the brain. And this is what we're looking at right here? Well, exactly. So on the left side, basically, we see a cerebral angiogram, and you see that the blood vessel on the left side of the screen is cut off, mm -hmm. and that's the blockage in the brain. And after we deploy and re withdraw the stent retriever, on the right side, you see we've restored blood flow to the brain. Wow. Dr. Ducre, who's most at risk for stroke? So um, there's a number of risk factors for stroke. Some of them we can't do anything about. Older patients, unfortunately, are at higher risk for stroke. But thankfully, we have uh, the ability to modify the majority of risk factors for strokes. Mm -hmm. Patients who have heart arrhythmias, specifically atrial fibrillation, um, and patients with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, diabetes, um, or those sorts of other medical uh, issues are at highest risk. So it's obviously very important to be seeing your primary care provider and mm -hmm. to be on the right medications to keep these risk factors and, and under control. And barrel brain and spine, of course, at the forefront of research and technique uh, for stroke intervention and prevention. And we appreciate you. That was very insightful information. We want to give you uh, some information now if you feel you could be at risk. Here's some contact information for barrel brain and spine. The number to call 602-406-8450. They also have a website for you. Uh, it's barrowbrain.com and spine.com.